Main taxi driver stories anyone? Be me, young taxi guy, driving along native tribe named Lake. See kid walking by side of the road. 11.30pm. Kid's dressed in sweat stained t-shirt and sports shorts. No shoes. Pull off. Unlock door and ask him to get in. Nice guy taxi driver to JPEG. Kid gets in. Thanks me for the ride. Turn up the air conditioner to keep him cool. Tells me he's going to the head of the lake where his parents live. Drop him off. Tell him to get some shoes. He laughs and goes inside. Pick up newspaper a couple days later. Kid is dead. Drunk driving. Drove into the lake. Find out from a cop buddy that the kid's body was in the car. Happened two hours before I picked him up. Still get the heebie-jeebies every time I drive by that lake. I have a shit ton more because Maine is haunted as fuck. Meh, fuck it. I don't get a chance to tell these stories often enough. Halloween is when people want to hear about it. Maine texts a guy again, by the way. Get a call to pick up at the south end of the county. Tiny woodland town. Maybe 500 residents. No gas station. That's how tiny it is. 8pm at night. Late dusk in the other woods. Still light, but limited. Headlights are on. Logging the run while waiting for a customer at his trailer, which sits right next to a cliffside slash earth bank thing, leading to a stream below. Toot horn because I waited 5 minutes for nothing. See tall shadowy figure rise from the bank. Figure it's the guy. It is. He gets him back and has to go to McDonald's, which is like 30 minutes away. Tell him the fare. He's cool with it. Roll up to Mickey D's and roll down rear window so he can order himself. Dude orders 85 cheeseburgers, 100 large fries, and 15 chicken wraps. Where was I by the bro dot BNG? Girl on the mic is all, what the fuck is this nigger on? 30 minutes to get the food ready. Take him home. Ask him why all the food. For my friends who live in the woods. Friends? These guys hate electricity. Hermits, huh? McDonald's big in the hermit community? Hey man, don't knock it, okay? They saved me from the demons that live in my house. Cool guys. They just want fries and burgers in return? They're nice like that. Fair is 45 bucks. He hands me $200 and asks me to help him bring the stuff to the edge of the bank. Get out to move the stuff. It's too dark to see anything but the warner. Hear a bunch of the bags being opened. Happy grunts. Shake head and get back into car. Nope the fuck out of there. I've got a few more stories about the Baron of Burgers. Get a call from Central about picking up the Burger Baron again. Noon time. Sure. I can spot his friends if they want a beef jerky. Sasquatches? Rob the Vine BB has axed the telephone pole next to his trailer down. No power to the house now. How did he call? Cell phone probably. Whatever. Dude is loaded. Toot the horn. Guy comes over the ridge. Bro has gone full on Grizzly Adams. It's been like two weeks since burger stock down by the stream. Fur coat, raccoon hat. He smells like beef stew. Hey, it's you again. He says as he gets into the back again. Yeah. How are your friends? Awesome. We all live in the woods now. Yeah? Get your fur coat at Goodwill? Nah, man. My friends made it for me. The hat too? Nah. My cousin bought it for me for calibers. Oh. My bad. It's cool. It's a cool hat. Where are we headed, Chief? Up to the mall. It's like 130 of there, man. You sure? It's all good. Here we go, the JPEG. Take him to the mall upstate. He falls asleep in the back. Sleeps like a baby back there. I almost forgot he was here if he didn't smell like soup. We get there. He flashes a 50 and says it'll tag that on top of everything, including the tip, if I come in and push the cart. Whatever, I'm up for it. We go into the home supply store and he buys blankets, jackets, tents, etc. Building an encampment? Sure I am, Uncle Josh. Who the fuck are you talking to? I'm David. No, your Uncle Josh. Hey man, you're paying waiting time, so you can call me Mummer if you want. You're such a card, Uncle Josh. Okay then. Time to check out. Start down the pots and pans aisle. Guy leaps in from me. Shoves me and the car back. Uncle Josh, are you crazy? They'll eat you! Pardon me, all the fuck, Chief. I didn't see him. Holy shit, this guy's insane. He grabs one of the blankets and drapes it over me as he holds me like an injured soldier and takes me to the cash out. Go, the counter giggles. They'll eat me, I tell her, winking. She nods slowly as she's scanning the tags. He ponies up 500 cash and tells her to keep the change. Load the car. Where to now, Daddy Morbucks? He laughs and says to take him home. Falls asleep again. Get him home. He puts 300 in my hand and kisses my cheek. Ew. See you soon, Uncle Josh. 
He waves to me as he starts throwing blankets and tents down the embankment. I shut the trunk and cruise away. I get crazy on my black. Main taxi guy again. Got orders from Central that I'm supposed to spend the weekend at a ski lodge down the state with one of the company's valued customers. Oh yes, this means to get to drive the Escalade. Heated leather seats, navigation, satellite radio. This also means to get to hang out with ski bunnies all weekend, trekking high in mucky marks between lodges and the town at the bottom of the mountain. This is gonna be good. Happy family. Two teens, braces, cute as fuck. Mum and dad are too busy with their blackberries. Kids get bored of listening to their music. Tell them about the burger chief. Everybody laughs. Good times. Get to the store. Bring in their stuff. They reserved a room for me. Lucky ass motherfucker. Crash in a studio apartment space. Dig the view. Can't smoke inside. Have to smoke by the SUV. Late at night. Get up to piss. Decide to smoke too. Leaning on the truck all bundled up. Here's some coyotes in the distance. Fucking hate, man. Puff, puff, puff. About to stamp out the cigarette. When I hear a coyote cry out in agony, like just beyond the headlights of the SUV. Hear bone snapping. Holy shit, what the fuck? Remember Burger Chief's friends. Shut headlights off and climb into SUV. Lock doors. Something heavy bumps into the ass of the SUV. Rocks it a little. Holy shit, holy shit, holy shit! Pull hat down over eyes. Couldn't eat me under a blanket. Hopefully hats qualify. Hear heavy breathing on the window next to me. It goes away. Wait for 20 minutes, then click on the headlights. Snowing its ass off. Get out and book it to the lodge. Find bloody footprints under fresh snow. Looks like a regular sized dude. Size 10 shoe maybe? God damn nigga you crazy. Cover the bloody stuff with the snow before the family wakes up. Still at the lodge. Eating breakfast the next morning. Family comes by in waves. Dad explains that they want to go down to buy a new snowboard for Junior. And the girls want to go shopping for a cute new snow gear. Totally cool with that. Get me the fuck off this mountain of death. Notice a bloody stake on the back gate. Wipe it off with a handful of snow. Tingle asks what I'm doing. Just wiping off some crud off the road. Are you going to wash this while we're in town? Yeah, sounds like a great idea. Drop family off and go wash truck. Sparkly clean. Brain can still see a smear on the back gate though. Pick them up and return to the mountain. Why? Back in where I was before. Parallel to this end of the lodge. Mountain Ranger approaches me as I get out of the SUV, already dropping the family off. Where were you last night? Yup, came out to have a smoke. Some weird stuff happened. Animal weird? I shake my head and explain what happened. She nods and blows me off as I dig up the snow to show her the blood. There's a bear down there. What the fuck? Since when do bears have feet? Did you tell anyone? Who'd believe me? I'm gonna go talk to the rangers. And we'll shut the side of the mountain down if we think there's trouble. So, keep my mouth shut? That would be best, until we do something. The mountain is loaded with daredevils. Someone will go looking for the bear. Right. Thanks. She goes back patrolling, staying clear of the tree line where the noises came from. Last chapter of The Weekend of Horror on Motor Mountain. Fuck, I hate that place. Smoke during the day. If I go out during the night, I stay close to the building and hang out around the hot springs. Swanky artificial ones. There's a bar, but I can't drink. Cool guy, taxi guy. Drinking a Pepsi. Smoking a few while I listen to the Saturday Night Band. Family's upstairs in the Grand Hall having some fancy ass family ruining. Chilling with the bartender and a couple of ski bunnies that I've been having breakfast with for a few days. Coyotes again. Heart rate picks up. Are they annoying or what? I ask the bartender. They're a bad omen. Coyotes don't come up this far up the mountain unless there's a fresh cool or something that has chased them up. Jesus Christ, man, are you a fucking movie character? Well, there's the lightning and dramatic organ. He laughs and shakes his head. Nothing can get you here. It's too noisy. Right. Relax a little. Stay a little later than I should have. Ski Bunny's drunk. We laugh it up some, and I call it a night before I do something stupid. Totally forgot about staying close to the building. Hear heavy breathing coming from under the SUV. Freeze. Standing maybe 12 feet from the SUV. Can't see what's under it. I don't want any trouble, I say with a stern voice. 2am. You just stay under there and I'll go inside. I say backing away from the SUV toward the entrance of my room. The breathing slows down and something crawls out from under there like it's making a nest or some friggy ass shit. I open my door and it stops crawling. I see hot breath rising up from under the running boards as if it's coming from under the truck. I don't want to know what you are. Fall through the door and kick it shut behind me, spin around and put my back against the door. Nothing. No noise. 
Shut the yard light off that had illuminated the SUV and that thing's breath. Get up in the morning and call the ranger down. Stay in the room until she comes to the door. Knocking makes me shit myself. Peek through the door. What's up, David? Remember that bear? Yes? I point through the door toward the SUV where some serious shit marks were left. What happened? I come out. When you pull your gun out and point it at the truck, I'm not taking any risks. We approach the SUV. She has her gun ready. There are a ton of marks all over the place. Look at scooped snow under the SUV and pushed it out. She kicks snow under the SUV and nothing happens. I pull out the keys and hit the panic button. Horns, siren, lights, but nothing under it. Must have left it in the night, she says kneeling down. Holy fuck you're nuts! I step back as she peeks under the truck and immediately backs away, standing up in a hurry. Jaws guy face at JPEG. What? What did it do? Did it hurt the SUV? No, it... I pissed and shit all over the place under there. Are, are you fucking kidding me? I move the SUV, and sure enough, it pissed and shit all over the place. Rolled around in it even. No fresh snow. Those are even people tracks. That's the same foot. Seems like you've got a friend, David. You know what? Fuck you, I say rubbing my forehead. Excuse me? She asks. Sorry, this is just crazy. You guys gonna shut down the mountain? Yes, this is too close to the lodge to be brushed off. Whatever did this needs to be chased off or captured. Oh sweet Jesus, thank you. Family and I book it. Get a call from the ranger a few days later. She says that they never found the guy that did it, but the urine and shit samples came back positive for human. She asked me again what I saw that night. I pulled my hand over my face. I told her jack shit. Never returned to Murder Mountain. Family hasn't either. But I did travel with them a few more times. Want to dox anyone?